Hi there. I love cooking with vintage cast iron and I've made a few videos using this trusty Birmingham stove and range cast iron skillet. But for now, let's do something with one of the best and most famous cast iron pans ever made, Griswold. Whenever antique vendors and collectors talk about the best vintage cast iron, they always bring up one name, Griswold. There's a good reason why Griswold made a name for itself as the gold standard of cast iron pans. This Griswold Dutch oven is polished smooth on the inside and outside, and it's very thin and light. The lid is described by collectors as a button lid because of this raised Griswold logo on the top, and the inside of the lid actually has an enamel coating, but the pot itself is bare iron, and this was likely manufactured in the early to mid-1920s because of this patent date on the bottom. This number 8 size Dutch oven is about 4.5 quarts in volume, and that's a little smaller than a modern-day large 5-quart Dutch oven, but it's certainly big enough for everyday use in the kitchen, and that's why we're going to use it to make one of my favorite everyday dishes, mashed potatoes. However, these mashed potatoes are going to be topped with a mushroom gravy, and to make the gravy, we're bringing out another Griswold cast iron pan. This is an eerie number 8 cast iron skillet made by Griswold before they put the Griswold logo on their pans. It dates to about the year 1905, and because identifying Griswold pans is a science in itself, they're able to accurately date it to that year because of the way the eerie logo is shaped and it's in quotes. As with every cast iron pan made by Griswold, it's very light, very thin, and extremely smooth. So making gravy with this eerie skillet is going to be a lot of fun. To make the best mashed potatoes, be sure to use russet potatoes, which simply can't be beat when it comes to mashing. All we do is cut our potatoes in half and arrange them in the Griswold Dutch oven, and be sure to use plenty of salt in the water. Now we just barely cover the potatoes with water, then we cover the pot and cook it at medium heat for 50 minutes, and that includes the time it takes to heat up the pan, about 20 minutes to bring the water to a boil, and 30 minutes to boil them. While the water is boiling, we slice up our mushrooms for the gravy. Now we drain the water from the pot, and our potatoes are ready for mashing. We add lots of butter to the pot, along with salt and pepper. A little more salt, but not much. Pepper. And some garlic powder and some parsley. Then we add a cup of heavy cream. And some cream. Time to mash away, mash away. Mash away all. And now we get to take out our frustrations and mash it all together. It only takes less than a few minutes for everything to be mashed, soft, and creamy. And here we are. And now for the gravy. Now we bring out the eerie skillet and melt two or three tablespoons of butter to fry up the mushrooms. To this, we add some minced garlic. And that's really all we need, though you can add your own seasonings if you want. It takes about five minutes of frying these mushrooms in butter before they're soft, delicious, and ready for the gravy. And for the record, I don't wash off my mushrooms. That's not necessary because the grit on the mushrooms was not dirt. Those were spores, and they dissolve completely when cooking. Now we add about a quarter cup of flour to the pan and stir it all around to make a roux. Then we start adding beef broth to the pan and stirring it around to make the gravy. Keep adding broth a little at a time and stirring it in until the gravy is at the consistency you want. Add in salt and pepper and a dash of Worcestershire sauce and our gravy is ready to be mixed in with the mashed potatoes. Don't look now, but we have gravy.
homemade mashed potatoes are a feast by themselves, but when you make a mushroom gravy to go with them, then that really hits it out of the ballpark. Any excuse to cook with a Griswold is worth it, and there's nothing better than a vintage cast iron Dutch oven to cook just about everything. I hope you've enjoyed this, and as always, thank you for watching.